So, what are for, what are your thoughts on this is a big one? What are your thoughts on the deconstruction of art, especially what, as in pertains to uh, Western culture? So, the deconstruction of art being like uh, you know. Andy Warhol reproducing things infinitely, um, and then we moved into, you know, the 1990s, we had unmade beds and sharks and tanks, and art became more and more, le uh, sorry, less and less refined and less precise and more about it can be anything you want it to be. Um, I mean, this arguably started with Picasso, but, and it can kind of be anything. And what are your thoughts on that? And how do you think that we can, because you create obviously artwork that's very precise, so it's the opposite. It's it's a reconstruction. So um, yeah, what are, what are mm. your kind of thoughts on that sort of aspect of the art world? Hmm, big one. Mm. Um, in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of conceptualism, um, I mean that started uh maybe with with duchamp and you know his ready mates and um that was that was a reaction as far as i understand that was a reaction against the craft of of art that had existed for you know forever and it's interesting because around uh, the same time when I think of Duchamp and, uh, you know, early 20th century, there was a reaction against to a lot of the conventions of fine art. So there was a reaction against um, religion. There was a re reaction against, you know, rational thought. And, and I think it all started in the early 20th century. And the, the thread that runs through it all maybe is, is, it's a lot of ideas that have been um, that have been created by socialism in a way, and all the constellation of ideologies that that complement socialism. And I think it's interesting now because that that ideology uh, is coming into conflict um, with there is a will to craft something. And there is a will to uh, to make something the best it can be. I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking about all the photorealism that you can find on Instagram, for instance. You know, how to make a photorealistic eye. It's super popular. It's really popular. You know, it is it is a it is a thing, and. That doesn't exist in isolation. I find that the idea that um, that people are really energized by wanting to make art well is perhaps inconsistent with what's been going going on in galleries. Mm. And I feel like that's that's part of this cultural conflict. Mm. And I mean, maybe it's something to do with self determination and self development and and. Um, the internet economy um, and cryptocurrency is part of that because that's all about self-determination as well, like wanting to be your own bank. And the equivalent in the crypto art space was be your own artist, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what ideology has to offer is is complaining, basically. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. I, I mean, I'm going back to the other question I asked near the start is, what was your experience in art school? What was it that they you found that they taught you? Did they teach you kind of how to lift things up and create things, or did you find that it was more about the concept? It was more about you know um, how what a tree is rather than how to paint one. Well, here's the deal with art school. Art school is kind of interesting because there is there is a um, there is desire to to. Um, to do things well, obviously, and to uh, to craft something, uh, but at the same time, there are, you know, all the, the tutors in art schools they they inherit the same perhaps the same ideological bias um, as the art world in general, so um, you know they bring that to the table, and um, I haven't to be honest I haven't stepped into an art school in. 10 years 
eight years, no, longer, 12 years, <laughs> Where, however long it was, a long time. So I don't know how, how qualified I am to talk about art schools now because think it, things can change a lot and I'm sure I have changed a lot. But back then for me, there was this, there still was this kind of, um, this ideology and, and it's not strong um, or it wasn't strong when I was there, but what um, this ideological bias has done is it's created a, a set of assumptions that are, that are working in the background. And um, yeah, that, that comes into conflict now with self-determination and self-sufficiency. I mean, for example, um, we really don't have much to complain about because, you know, we have the tools for um self-determination you know at our fingertips a hundred years ago there was a legitimate complaint to be had yeah you know against religion or against you know the the upper classes and there was a legitimate complaint perhaps in the 60s you know with the student protests but now i mean we're we're so uh, empowered by technology um and these two things, the ideology of the institution and how we're living our lives are coming into conflict, I find, yeah. uh, to the extent that there's this sort of surging desire in the public for self-determination, self but the institutions that we have, be it the institution of politics or institution of art, doesn't necessarily cater to that. And instead, this everything's getting squashed into a box of of uh, politics it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more intense um and at the same time the the desire to express self-sufficiency is, is expanding and uh we're in that moment in culture where our institutions don't necessarily represent um the the desires of the and the, the aspirations of the public and i'm painting some broad i realize i'm painting in broad brushes the art world isn't one thing yeah the institution of politics isn't one thing like it's actually lots of different archipelagos with all different agendas. But um, I suppose what I'm talking about is like a, a specific portion of of the art world or, or the political world that has a controlling interest. It's definitely the one that you hear the most about. I mean, obviously, crypto art is, is a very different space, but the mainstream art world, I think if anyone walks into a gallery, most people leave confused. And um, I always said that you shouldn't be confused. If you don't get it, it's not, you know, it's not art to you. You should get it. Um, that sh you know, you shouldn't have to be told all this conceptual stuff to actually understand what the artwork is. Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so uh, where do you think, I don't know what I meant by this, but where do you think this started and why? Not literally this live stream, but where, yeah, oh, okay, it pertains to my last question. So what are your thoughts on deconstruction of art? And we kind of, covered that but i don't know if you've got any other thoughts on um where this kind of started why why do you think that it started um yeah i mean i i would i would say that um early 20th century again um i think marxism was, was the first and socialism was the first kind of cultural coup and um a lot of art movements gravitated towards marxism as a reaction again against uh, against religion, against the conventions of, 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 of art. And, and that avant-garde early 20th century stuff was, was all, um, it was all a reaction against the very kind of dusty institutions of art. And there's instant revolutionary appeal. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, the, 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 our institutions has doubled down on that I ideology and um they haven't moved past that and um well, it's, yeah it's that's almost as if they think well now it's cool and now everybody's doing it it's suddenly you know it, it might have been at one point a very revolutionary thing to be as is, is, is a marxist but now every single news organization well most and most institutions are on that sort of side of the fence it's not very cool or revolutionary at all it's it's a very kind of mainstream thing to believe sure and and it becomes a self-reinforcing cycle because if you imagine, say like when, when someone has, uh, let's say you're a director of a, of a gallery or, or a luxury brand and you want to market to a specific audience, what you're going to do is, um, 
is you need to create like a, an avatar of that audience so they can be marketed to. And so there's, there is a, um, an incentive then to tell what a certain generation or a certain demographic, you know, who they are to sort of dictate to them, you know, you're all communists now, or you're all Marxist now, or you're all feminist now, whatever. Yeah. And so it, it, it reinforces itself. But, um, in that, in that reinforcing, it, it leaves people questioning. And, you know, we're in, we're in a time when I think everyone has a space to question um, the mainstream narratives. And, and uh, yeah, um, someone that, that I always, uh, an artist that I've always admired, and this is going to sound really, really weird, but an artist that I've already reminded from, from the early 20th century, Salvador Dali. Yeah, and I, I remember. Think weird at all. I think I think quite a lot of people would uh, would would admire admire him. <laughs> it's it doesn't really show in my work, but I suppose I mean I've always liked him since I was a child. Since I was, um, and I was just instantly hooked on on uh, anyone anyone who knew me from the age of like twelve to fifteen will say this guy's obsessed with Salvador Dali. Mm. And I can remember some art teacher saying. Uh, you know, I think you'll grow out of it. Well, I haven't, because Salvador Dali is an example of an artist who kind of carved his own path, and he started out life as a communist and an atheist, and when he was part of the Surrealist movement, and then he died a fascist and a Catholic. <laughs> and so, and so the message there for artists is: I mean, I'm not any of those things. I would, yeah. I would call myself a Marxist. Definitely wouldn't call myself a Catholic or a fascist. But um, I, I think that's a message to artists now where you can kind of carve your own path and, uh, and still make it into the history books. Yeah. So I quite like that story. Well, that's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I love Dali's work. I'd love to see some of your notes um, kind of Dali-ified. Uh, have you thought about doing some surrealist work? I mean, I can see as well why you would admire him from a technical perspective perspective too because his art's very crisp and kind of well produced it's not only surreal yeah he's he's someone who was very vocal about his admiration for uh the old masters and you know Velasquez and and da vinci and Raphael, and you know he wasn't afraid you know at the same time there was pop art being made you know andy warhol screen printing he was making uh his photorealist stuff but he still found ways of integrating mainstream culture in his work with like, you know, Coca-Cola bottles and, and all the rest of it. And, um, you know, I love that. And, and, and that's, there is an element to me, there's an impulse in me that's sort of cartoon, cartoonish. And it's all the stuff that I do sort of verges on that. You know, the idea of putting Kanye West on a, on a banknote, there is a cartoon impulse in there. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like really well crafted. And that's that's something that, you know, I just can't get away from. That's like a, you know, that's something that I want to achieve in all my work. But if you were to see what I was doing when I was 12, 13, it was all surrealist stuff. It was all Salvador Dali stuff. Yeah. <laughs>